guys welcome back to my channel welcome if you are new my name is heather i'm a homeschooling mom of three kids elementary middle and high school age we are in our 12th year homeschooling this year today i'm going to be sharing with you this hq get organized planner goal planner slash weekly planner i purchased this uh several weeks ago when they launched this planner because i'm not sure what i'm going to be doing for goals for 2023 now I have to be upfront with you and let you know that I have filmed this video twice already. So I have gone through this planner two full times uh, and neither time it recorded, even though I pressed record. So yeah, third time's a charm, hopefully. <laughs> I am going to turn the camera around and go through this planner with you. Like I said, I have been up in the air on 2023 goals. Uh, what I'm going to use, I'm, I don't think I'm going to be using the power sheets this year. And I have been using the power sheets, the full year power sheets since 2015. And I started in 2014 with their undated six month version. Um, I love the prep work in the power sheets. However, uh, they have made some changes recently and it hasn't been working for me. And so instead of trying to force myself to use something that isn't working, I want to uh, change my method. So that is what I'm planning on doing for 2023, changing my method, but what it is going to be, I'm not sure. So let's go through this goal planner and I will share my thoughts with you. Like I said, this is the third time that I am recording this and my hope is that it will just work this time. So I got this Get Organized HQ Planner because I had seen this little online conference type thing from Get Organized HQ. I did purchase that uh, all about organizing your home and meal planning and family and all, all of the organizational things, which I love. Uh, and then, so I got an email about this planner and so I purchased it because like I said, I'm trying to figure out something with goals. Now, this is a weekly planner and I do not need a weekly planner because I have my Erin Condren weekly planner, which I will use through uh, June of 2023 and then get the new whatever the new version is. I love the Erin Condren planner. I do not want to change it, but I got this specifically because of the goal setting. It comes in this really nice box. Every day is a fresh start. This is the navy version. There is also a plaid multicolor. I don't know. I'm assuming that the box is different for the plaid multicolor. Uh, it is $49. It came with this sticker, less stress, more peace. It came with these planner bookmarks, magnetic bookmarks, really nice large ones, which I like. I think I must have gotten a package or something when I ordered it because I don't know if these things normally come with it. And then I also got the last quarter of 2022, which has all of the same pages uh, just in this little booklet, which I thought was really nice. So this is the planner. Uh, it's not... I don't really know what the dimensions are. My Erin Condren is seven by nine. And so I think this is probably like eight by eight, maybe. It has this hard cover. Um, it's pretty smooth. Like if you had something on it, I think it would be pretty easy to wipe away. And the big reason that I purchased this is this coil because I am a coil person. And I've realized that when it's the wire -o binding, and it's something that I have to use, I just don't like it. Um, so let's get into the planner. So when you open it up, it does have this little pocket on the side. It's not very sturdy. I think that if you try to put too much stuff in here, it would definitely rip, but it is nice to have a little pocket right here. 2023, this planner belongs to Get Organized HQ. And then a letter from Laura. Laura is the person who designed and created this planner. Uh, it says there's nothing magical about January 1st. I love a fresh start, but you can start a new goal on September 18th, just as well as you can on January 1st. Your goals are worthwhile. The best thing to do is to do the best things. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that success only comes when you do all of the things, but that's not true at all. This planner was designed to help you get the best things done. Comparison and society standards of what a woman like you should be doing can check it at the door. So 
this is now the about me section. There's a little bit of, you know, get to know you, name, favorite color, birthday, favorite place to shop. I would describe my personality as people I'm closest to. In my downtime, I like to my top three talents. Which of the following areas are most important to me? What stresses me? One thing I've always dreamed of doing is. Then you're going to move into your year at a glance mini calendars uh, for future planning or whatnot. I do really like these um, and I use them in most of my planners. I, I work out of multiple planners. I don't use every section of every planner, but this is one that I tend to use. Although the 2024 future planning, I only do this like in my reading journal when I know there are books that are coming out way, way out. Uh, and then it has some information, your best year yet, planning your days. The way that she organizes her days is in three different buckets. And it there's a little example over here. And this is how the weekly pages, weekly planning pages are going to look. She has bucket one, which is your main priorities. Start out each day by picking the three to five things that belong at the tippy top of your to-do list. Work on these items first. And she uses the phrase hop to it, where the H stands for habit, something you want to do every single day. The O stands for objective, pick one to three tasks you plan to finish that day. And then P stands for passion, do something every day that brings you joy. I really like this, the way that she breaks it out as to what you should be doing. I especially like the passion part because I think that oftentimes we don't try to do something that also brings us joy every day and I do find that very important. Then bucket two is going to be your appointments and errands. Then bucket three is the wish list items which are things that you'd like to get to during the week but they aren't uh, must-dos. They it's I would say probably like a brain dump type thing. And then over on this page, you're looking at goal setting tips, your best year yet. Uh, and the way that she has this goal planner set out is that there are six focus areas that you get to work on throughout the year. And then within that focus area, you have eight goals. So she says, I find it helpful to divide my goals into focus areas. There's no right or wrong way to do this. I think through what roles I fill and how I can generally categorize my plans. Words like health and fitness or motherhood come to mind. I really, really like this. One of the reasons that I have kind of stepped away from the power sheets is because in the past two years, they have moved towards filtering your goals through their cultivated life evaluation. That is not how I set my goals. I know that this year for 2023, they made some adjustments to the different goal categories, but I have never used those goal categories for goal setting. I do like to check in in the cultivated life evaluation in those different areas of my life, but I don't necessarily set goals in those categories. So the fact that you are able to create your own focus areas in this planner, that was one of the things that really drew me to purchase this in the first place. Um, another planner that I've looked at is the Moxie Life Planner which I do not need, again, the weekly planning. And they also have different areas that they want you to go through with their compass um, assessment. Let me see, which I printed off. They have these free printables on their website if you sign up for their email list. So they have these eight areas, which yes, most of your goals can fit into some Thing in the different areas, the different categories, but I just feel uh, a little bit better about creating my own, mainly because I have like homeschool, I have my relationships with my kids, my relationship with my spouse, work stuff. I just, it just works better for me. And I've been goal setting since I was in high school. Uh, so I do already have a system. I just really liked the power sheets prep work and the tending list. It helped me narrow down my focus on my goals. Okay. But that's not why we are here. <laughs> so then we are going to move into some more goal setting tips, habits and projects, monthly goal setting. Okay. Let's see. So focus areas, 
habits and projects. As you go through the goal setting prompts, you'll see a column to mark each goal as a habit or project. A habit is an action you want to take each and every day. You will know you've achieved your goal when that action becomes second nature. A classic example is flossing. And then a project is a one and done activity that you will one day be able to mark off your list and never have to do again. She has uh, the project as running a marathon as an example, which I think it's kind of funny because one of my good friends runs a couple of marathons a year and she has been ever since I met her. And so that's definitely not a one and done project on her list, but um, I do like that example. And then monthly goal setting. Every month you'll find a page similar to this uh, where the focus areas are color coded. You have your six focus areas and then you can write a goal and give yourself a rating for how you feel like you are doing in that particular focus area. Then you have a notes and thoughts page, and then you're moving into your focus areas. So again, there are six focus areas. They are color coded um, and there are stickers in the back so that uh, they also correspond to these colors. And then each month you will have your focus area with the particular color. But this is kind of the prep work section, I would say, and it's very open-ended. Yes, there was a little bit about goals, uh, about yourself at the beginning, and then about how you set your goals, goal setting tips. But as far as figuring out which areas you want to work on, there's not a whole lot of built-in prep work, I would say. So you are going to look at the focus areas that you find most important in your life. Again, there are six. You write your focus area, you give yourself an initial rating, what made me happy, what made me sad, things you want to improve in this area. If I could only improve one thing by the end of 2023, what would I want it to be? And what will I let go of within this focus area? Sometimes this can be something that is like a long-term goal that you really just don't have the bandwidth to focus on at this moment and it's okay to let it go. Or it can be some sort of block that is in your way, some sort of thing that you just need to change your thinking uh, so that you are able to better focus on your focus area. <laughs> And then you have a space for eight goals and a place to write, whether it's a habit or a project. And again, there are stickers in the back that correspond to these colors so that you can um, work on that. So there are six focus areas. Each uh, spread is exactly the same, just a different color. And this is how it is for each of the focus areas. And then what happens is, well, you have another notes page and then you have this quotes page. It's a little bit thicker cardstock and reinforced tabs, um, you move into your monthly planning. Now you have a January or a monthly overview section, this month's key habit. So you choose one thing and then you have a place to mark it off each day of the month. And then a little bit of finance stuff, bills, savings, income, this is not enough space for me personally with all of the expenses and uh, different categories that we have uh, in our budget. I guess that it would be nice for uh, maybe like a single person or a family that doesn't have a whole lot of expenses or needs to keep track of. But for me personally, this would not really function very well for me. I have to have a completely different budgeting system. I've used an Excel spreadsheet for years. And then more recently, I am moving into more paper planning because I have some specific financial goals that I want to work on. Then there's a section for monthly affirmation. And then you move into your monthly calendar. It is blank. There are no holidays listed. It does have these little mini monthly calendars up at the top, the previous month and the next month, which I actually really like. And it's not something that I really see in planners that like, the more high-end planners that you pay a lot of money for, but there are often times when I have to look back at a previous month uh, just for counting days or to see a specific thing, and I don't need to look at the monthly calendar. I just want to see this little monthly calendar with the days on it. Um, so I actually really like this feature. <laughs> then there's some notes section. This is just a dot dotted lined uh, 
uh, space. Then you move into your goal setting and here you'll see the six different focus areas in the color coding that they have done for you. And then you're going to write whatever you are working on in this particular focus area. And then at the end of the month, you're going to give yourself a rating as to how you did. I don't think you would do this at the beginning of the month. Maybe you would, but because you just went through all of the focus areas and you gave yourself a rating, it doesn't make sense to me that you would just transfer that rating over here. I feel like you would want to go back and see how you were doing at the end of the month. You have a notes page and then you move into the weekly pages. Now, this is not super thick paper. It's a little bit thicker than copy paper, I think, um, but it's not super luxurious. Uh, it does, it's not super smooth either. It does feel like it has a little bit of tooth, so maybe it, uh, it would be okay, but I feel like probably the people that use the markers or the thicker uh, pens and such, it would probably bleed through a little bit or have shadowing. So you're looking at your week, it has a Monday start, and then she divides them into the different buckets, like uh, she explained at the beginning. Bucket one, the hop, which is habits, objectives, passion, your uh, errands and to-dos, uh, or where you need to go, I guess in bucket two, and then your wish list items, which would just be, you know, like a brain dump at the beginning of the week, things that you need to get done. Now, I do not need a weekly planner for goal setting. And um, I don't think I would use it because I really just want attending list and prep work. That is my main focus for goal planning. Um, I don't break down my goals into weekly uh, scheduled action items. I do have weekly action items. I do have daily habits and I have monthly uh, projects that I work on, but I don't feel the need to go in and schedule those on particular days. That is just me. I know how much time I have to work on things and I do allot myself specific time periods to work on some of my goals, but I don't necessarily write it in because a lot of my goal progress comes in the margins and I don't necessarily plan every second of my margin. Sometimes things will happen and I will just have some extra margin and I will say, okay, today I'm going to tackle the game closet, which is what I did yesterday. So January reflection, this is at the end of the month, tag there it, who made a difference in your life, favorites, food, song, book, moment, a monthly check-in, how I felt this month, one thing I will let go of from this month, if something negative happened or something that kind of just puts you down, um, you can just, write it down, let it go. One thing I will embrace next month. And then themes, which words or phrases stood out to you. And then you move right into February. And it does have a different color scheme for each month. Um, it there Well, there's six different color schemes. It goes through June and then it, it reverts back to January's color in July um, through December. So you have your overview, you have your monthly calendar, which because of Wednesday start. Now you have some extra space up here. So it's not like it's not the same notes space each month because the calendar itself changes. And also I did just notice this that the tab doesn't open to the month, which I think might bother me a little bit, but maybe not so much in a goal planner because maybe I would just maybe this is like, I don't know. I don't know. I, th I think I would still prefer to have it open up to the actual month. Then you have your goal setting section. So your focus areas, uh, new goals that you're working on. And again, your rating, your notes page, and then your weekly pages. And then I did want to point out this does have the little mini monthly calendar and it highlights what week you're on. So, so this obviously Wednesday is a first. So they highlight through the fifth. 
um, which I think is is kind of nice. Is it is it necessary? No, but it is, you know, just so you can see where you are in the week. Um, and then that's how it goes through the whole planner. There are no quarterly uh, refreshes or goal check-ins. It's just the monthly goal setting, which I think that you know, that could go either way. Last year in the 2021 power sheets, they had quarterly refreshes with some new things that you could try, um, you know, a little prep work refresh as well as the mini action plans, the mini goal action plans, which were so helpful to me in 2021. I feel like 2021 was one of the most successful years that I had for goals in quite a while um, and accomplished so much. So 2022 has been a little bit of a struggle for me not having those mini action plans. Now, <laughs> all that to say, you can do those. I can do those in a notebook and you can print them off out of goal school. But I really wanted something that was all together in one bound book, one bound planner. That's just how I like it. I didn't want to have to spend all kinds of money and then go and print a bunch of extra things that I then had to figure out what I was going to do with them because they were loose printer paper. So I thought this might be good. Um, because I really do like the monthly goal setting and I liked that you could create your own focus areas. But again, I don't need the weekly planning and that is why I did not purchase the Moxie Life flagship planner because again, I don't need the weekly planning. I kind of just want something sitting out uh, that I can look at, um, which is what I've been doing in my... Uh, let me find a month. Here we go. <laughs> In my life planner, um, it has, it's been working quite well to have this. Uh, it takes me a little bit of time to set this up each month, but it, it hasn't been that bad. Now, one of the things that I liked about having a separate goal planner is that I can have my monthly planner or my weekly planning pages sitting out on my stand and then I would also have my tending list sitting on another stand but now I do have to flip back and forth between the two which is a little I guess it's not that challenging but I have always liked to look at this when I'm coming in and out of my office but I also want to see my week at a glance so it's I don't like the flipping back and forth but that's where we are at <laughs> with planning at the moment. Um, yes. So again, you just keep going through the weekly pages, the reflection, and then moving into the next month. Uh, and that's how it goes through each month of the year until you get to December. Um, and then again, your overview, your monthly calendar, goal setting, notes, and then your weekly planning. your December reflection, and then more notes pages. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 notes pages, which is nice. And then you have all kinds of stickers. And again, these are color coded to the different uh, focus areas. So you have little circles, hearts, flags, arrows, and then you have some, um, you know, good morning, you can, I can do this. Some little water droplets. I really like these, these little teeny tiny, um, I don't know what you would call them, little teeny tiny stickers. I like those. Uh, and then again, you have the stickers that correspond to the different colors with the habit and project. So when you go back, When you go back to your focus areas, there is a section where you can put habit or project. So you can use these stickers um, in those spots. Again, they are color coded and then more water droplets. They do have some sections uh, for focus 
areas if you do not know what you want to focus on, which is what I talked about in the beginning a little bit. Maybe you don't know what you want to focus on, so this might not be as helpful to drill down on the specific areas you want to work on. Um, so they do have some options over here that you can uh, use if you are kind of at a loss as to what you want to do. Uh, more habit and project, I'm worth it, piece of cake, messy bun, getting stuff done, more water droplets. And then the back does have this little folder, just like the front. Again, it's not super sturdy, so it could rip if you try and put too much stuff in there. But this is the Get Organized HQ goal planner slash weekly planner. I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, you can certainly leave them in the comments. I did want to share it with you. I know it's often hard to find coiled goal planners, so that was definitely something that I was interested in. And I was also curious, uh, because of the whole Get Organized HQ uh, conference thing if they would have more checklist items similar to the passionate penny pincher home planner they do not yeah I, I do like I do like this planner it's not going to be the one that I use for 2023 but if you are looking for a weekly goal planner uh, I think this could be a good option for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.